In today's video, I show you where to look for adhesions on MRI in patients after hip surgery for femoral acetabular impingement. You as my patron, I would really like to thank you because your ongoing support motivates me to keep going with this project. And this is the exclusive video for my patrons only for May 2019. I hope you like it. Comment below or on my Patreon page if you have any questions. Let's have a look at these adhesions on MRI in patients after FIA surgery. I'm not going to cover what femoral acetabular impingement is, etc. I assume that you already know that because it's pretty basic. Anyways, some patients don't have a favorable outcome after FIA surgery and here listed are potential reasons. A very common reason is under or over correction of bony deformities and this might even lead to insufficiency fractures if too much bone on the femoral neck is resected and that's about in 2% of patients the case. And capsular defects are quite common. I'm not really sure about the clinical consequences of these but sometimes they get closed and um, so ha have a look out of these. I'm not going to cover them here in this video. Maybe I do a video in the future about it. Then you can of course have new chondrolabral lesions uh, retear and stuff like that and you can have a natural progression of the osteoarthritis especially if surgery is performed pretty late and now the topic of this video is the post-operative development of intraarticular adhesions this is the first case before surgery and um, there are, are a few things that i would like to point out here this is not an adhesion this is just a plica and then here keep that recess in mind which is the perilabral sulcus here okay between the labrum and the joint capsule which is attaching up here so this is very important to remember and also look here how the capsule is running around here i can show you this also on the axials you can see the bone contour and this bump here it's in normal structure this is the part of the iliofemoral ligament which is one of the strongest ligaments here in the joint capsule it's not an adhesion and if you feel enough contrast in arthrography then you can lift this up as well so this is preoperatively and the reason this patient had surgery was obviously some slight cam deformity and a labral degeneration with tears and intralabral ganglionsis here and this is after surgery the patient did not do well still had symptoms after surgery and came back a few months later for a second MRI and if you have a patient after cam surgery now let me show you this here you can see there was um, removal of some bone here and it's very important if you do a arthrography in these patients after surgery to not point your needle onto the femoral neck as you would usually do it because you might actually end up here in this adhesion I show you the adhesion in a minute just focus your needle on the supralateral quadrant of the femoral head in order to avoid injecting the contrast into the adhesion if there is one okay so this is after surgery and I showed you here that we had bone removed and you can see the joint capsule here and you have all these structures here running onto the bone here is still contrast but you can see maybe too big these adhesions here here and if you also look at this on the axials you can see that the contrast there is like a different contrast in between here so there might be even some septations and compartmentalization and stuff like that another thing to look for is that the lateral border of the joint capsule can move medially because it's adhering here onto the bone and there in the literature basically they are separating uh, at least in one study different types of adhesion so you can either have a complete complete adhesion which is the case if you have the whole joint capsule here attaching onto the bone and then only opening up here or you ha can have incomplete adhesions as in this case where you have the adhesion of the joint capsule onto the bone but then you have also areas where there is no adhesion laterally to the previous adhesion here now here is the 
image from that paper. Um, I hope I don't get problems with copyright. Anyways, you can see that there is basically the distinction between complete adhesions, where you have the adhesion all the way from laterally to the medial portion. And if you still have some contrast running in here, like in this case, similar to the one that I just have shown you, then this is basically an incomplete adhesion. And then again, you can also differentiate the adhesion based on the signal intensity, as they did in this study, between intermediate and hypointense. And the one we had in our case was an intermediate signal intensity. It was not completely hypointense, as you would assume in this case. And again, this bubble here, this structure is the iliofemoral ligament or one of the capsular ligaments. Let's go back to the case and you can see we have this incomplete adhesion with intermediate signal intensity and because this adhesion is attaching very far medially here, maybe even up here, this might actually limit the range of motion in this patient and lead to another soft tissue impingement after uh, the bony protuberance was removed. So this patient underwent revision surgery and after atheziolysis, then you can see that now the adhesion is gone. They removed the adhesion and we have the normal appearance after surgery again. Perilabral sulcus here. We have this sulcus here between the joint capsule and the labrum. This is before surgery and this is now after surgery. And you can see it's obliterated. So there is also an adhesion between the joint capsule and the labrum. And this can happen quite often. And the theory is that this might actually um, made, make the labrum less flexible and might also affect the sealing function the labrum has in the hip joint. And as a consequence, this adhesion here should also be reported in patients after hip surgery. Now, I'm not sure if they did anything here. Oh, well, they tried. You can see the contrast is now running up in here. So they tried to um, remove this adhesion there as well. Now, let me show you this here also on the nice images here. You can see the adhesion here between the joint capsule and the labrum. And they made the differentiation between adjacent if it's just adjacent here, or if the labrum is like lifted up onto the joint capsule. So there might be a difference in clinical symptoms because this labrum does certainly not have a seal function anymore, while this one might actually be still okay. So I hope this was helpful. And um, next time you will do a MR in a patient after hip surgery for ephemeral acetabular impingement, make sure to check these two sites and report the adhesions there if there are any. If you have any questions, comment over on my Patreon page because you will probably be not able to comment on this video because it's unlisted. And yeah, that's it for today. And thanks for watching and thanks for supporting. You are the best. See you next time.